so first you need to understand what is synchronous programming what is asynchronous programming so synchronous programming first we need to understand what is the synchronous code h1 first we need to understand the synchronous code so in the synchronous code you can say execution flow then blocking in nature blocking nature you need to understand then short example similarly about a synchronous code a synchronous code so i'm going to type the code first and you need to explain me what would be the output execution flow non blocking nature and example so let's start by means of the synchronous code so here app 01.js and i can say console.log start console.log start and now some operation for let i is equals to 0 i is less than 5 i plus plus and console dot log here i can say i and here console dot log end correct so if you look at the code very carefully first this line would be getting executed Yes. Then this loop is going to get executed for five times. Yes. And then end would be getting executed. So end would be getting executed after completion of this operation. So you can consider that this is some operation. This is some operation. This is some heavy operation like going to the server and then coming back. Okay. Yes. So, you can consider this is that operation. So, start and end. Now, let's run the program, cd day 49 and node app01.js, can you see start 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and end, okay. So, when you talk about this, when you talk about this, the flow is synchronous, first this line will execute then this line will execute five times then this line will execute then this line will execute right yes. now i will write one more code tap 02.js so console.log start would be as it is console.log end would be as it is and set timeout so first you need a function 
right? We have seen set timeout function. Yes, yes. And mid or executing in between. In between. After zero seconds or after one one second, that is one thousand millisecond. Now, can you tell me the output? How output will work? Uh, first, uh, uh, start is printed. Uh-huh. Then? Then? Uh, then printing in between. Okay. Uh, and give a uh, 1000 one millisecond. 1000? One uh, uh, no, just a minute. One after. So, this this function would be getting called. So first line this first at the first this line would be getting executed. Yes. Okay. Then after one thousand millisecond, that is one second. Yes. After one second, this function would be getting called. Get one. And then end would be getting called. You mean to say like this. Right? Yes. So you yes. but see the output. Start start. Can you see? Start, end, and in between. In between. Correct. Start, end, and in between. So you might say that this is because of this one second. So there is a, so this line would be getting executed. Then there is a delay of one second, and because of that one second delay, first end gets printed, and then this gets printed, or then this console dot log gets printed, right? Yes. You might say something like this because of this one second, the in between is getting printed at the end. Start immediately gets printed, end immediately gets printed, and then in between. Right? But if I add 0 over here, same. then also same start and in between, which means that this programming pattern is different. And this programming pattern is different. Correct? Yes. So the execution of this and execution of this has two different programming approaches. Synchronous yes. and what? Asynchronous. Synchronous and asynchronous. Correct? Yes. Now, a sync code can be achieved in multiple ways. A synchronous programming can be achieved using the callbacks, using third party libraries like observables. There are multiple approaches, but I am going to just focus on promises. I'm going to focus here on the promises. Promises. Okay, so let's complete the documentation execution flow. In the synchronous code, execution happens in sequential and the blocking manner. In synchronous code, execution happens in sequential and blocking manner. Each operation is executed one after other. Each operation is executed one after other and program waits for each operation to compute to complete before next thing so here this line won't be getting printed this line won't be getting printed until execution of this loop completes which means that execution of this line is blocking execution of this line gets blocked until this loop gets completed that's what the blocking in nature. Synchronous code is blocking in nature, meaning that synchronous code is blocking in nature, meaning that each operation must complete before the next one starts. If one operation takes long time to finish, if one operation takes a long time to finish, that is the network request file upload the entire program will be held up till the means 
if this code takes 10 minutes to complete this loop takes 10 minutes to complete right mm -hmm. this this operation would be getting performed after the 10 minutes that's the problem of the blocking code an example example here we can see this would be the example right now asynchronous in asynchronous code asynchronous code operation doesn't complete in in the order they are written operations don't necessarily complete in order see here in order so first this will complete then this will complete and then this will complete asynchronous programming so they can complete any time we cannot say that this will come complete first and this will complete later that's what the asynchronous synchronous sequential asynchronous in order, uh, don't complete in order. order we can't say which operation would be getting complete at what time yes. right instead of waiting so here you can say instead of waiting for each operation to finish the program can continue with other tasks while waiting for the certain operations to complete right yes. in asynchronous programming the code is non-blocking meaning that program doesn't stop and wait for an operation to finish before moving on operation code is non-blocking meaning that program program doesn't wait and stop for an operation to finish before moving on if you go here your application doesn't stop to complete this line it immediately shifted to next line and once this operation is completed log would be getting printed yes. so a synchronous operation so here we can say asynchronous operations typically involve the callbacks promises or async await so from this callbacks we will not see because an outdated approach we will see these two promises a single wait right yes. you may study callbacks on your own not a big deal uh, this is also callback you can say kind of thing okay, so this is a callback pattern after zero seconds this callback function would be getting called this function yes. this function would be getting called after after one second so function would be getting called once operation is get completed that is the callback function correct Now, this is about the fundamentals of synchronous and asyn or basics of asynchronous programming. No promises. No promises. What do you mean by promise? So, in the promises, first we will see H1. A definition of promise then again h1 states of promises then h1 anatomy of the promises anatomy means how you can create the promises using promise constructor resolve and reject functions okay
now so in javascript okay so in javascript promise is an object that represents eventual completion or the failure of particular operation promise is an object that represents eventual completion or failure of a synchronous operation what is that hello completion eventual completion or failure you need to consider both eventual completion or failure failure a promise is an object that represents the eventual completion or failure of operation it is a way to handle the asynchronous code it is a way it is a way to handle asynchronous code more elegantly and avoid the callback head or the nested callback structure that can arise the traditional callback based approach so callbacks we need to avoid okay yes. and that's why we need promises so one more thing about the promises is after a lot of days i am opening whiteboard now consider that this is your javascript file and that javascript file wants to communicate with with what you can say tv i want to get i want to communicate with what or you can say cctv cc tv right cctv yes you can get connected to the cctv by means of javascript remember that no problem so your javascript code first will try to get connect to the cctv first connecting to the cctv yes. right then this connection would be verified and all other things and after one or three seconds you will get a successful connection to the cctv right yes. so if you look at this this operation is not synchronous operation so let me create third file new file app dot app 03 dot js now here uh, console dot log trying to connect trying to connect trying to connect and then here you will write some code code to connect to cctv and after some time so this is not a sequential code because you are going to make a request from here we are going to make make a request to the cctv boss give me the connection cctv might have given connection to the multiple javascript clients right your mobile client your android app client ios app client the cctv might have connected with the other devices this so getting connected to this your javascript program might take time right so this connectivity 
might take considerable time or might take time so so this is not a synchronous call this is it is a sync a synchronous call this is what a synchronous call so you know what do you mean by a synchronous one operation is not dependent on other operation to get complete right so it is a a synchronous call so how to handle this scenario this scenario can handle in the multiple ways there are multiple approaches to handle this scenario and one of them javascript based scenario is what promise correct so here you will create here you will create a promise here you will cre create a promise for connecting to cctv correct yes any questions uh, sir promise means it's a request we'll see you'll get to know what exactly promise means what exactly promise is absolutely you will get don't worry yes okay but consider that promise is some piece of code that handles the asynchronous operations properly promise is that piece of structure like a class that piece of code that handles the structure in very proper way okay hello Yes, <coughs> now here if you see definition of promise this would be the definition of promise now there are some states of promises what are the states of promises so promises would be having three states promises in the javascript is having three different states promises in javascript have three distinct states pending fulfilled rejected these states you can say these states represent the different stages that promise goes through during its life cycle from instantiation from initiation of the asynchronous operation to its completion or failure okay yes. means whenever you create a promise promise undergoes different stages right so first stage over here first stage over here is pending fulfilled rejected three stages are there pending fulfilled rejected okay now now a pending state this is the initial state so whenever you create the promise promise would be in which state initial pending state. state pending state not initial state yes. pending state pending is the state. initial state yes. when promise is created it starts in the pending state in the pending state promise 
in the pending state the promise neither fulfilled nor rejected fulfilled means successful rejected means some error is there yes, it is waiting for asynchronous operation to be complete or fail, fail. what is the pending state it is a waiting for a sync operation to complete or fail. fail fulfilled the fulfilled state right the fulfilled state represents the successful completion of the asynchronous operations operation associated with the promise the fulfilled state represents successful completion of the asynchronous operation associated with the promise if the asynchronous operation is successful if asynchronous operation is successful the promise transitions from pending state to the fulfilled state if a sync operation is successful promise transitions from pending state to the fulfilled state right the result of this is important now the result of successful operation is typically passed to the resolve function the result of operation the result of successful operation is typically passed to the resolve function okay the rejected state here you can say the rejected state indicates that the asynchronous operation associated with the promise has encountered an error or failed has encountered rejected means what there is an error or failed if an error occurs during the async operation if an error occurs during the asynchronous operation the promise transitions from pending state to what rejected state the reason for the failure often an error object is passed the reason for the failure often an error object is typically passed to the reject function we are going to i am going to code these three things which are important but before starting with the promises so if you are giving the interviews this is where this is the topic where interviewer is going to grill you like anything okay this is the topic where interviewer is going to grill you like anything okay now now let's code it Sir, what is the resolve function we'll see that you will get to know just a minute now anatomy of the promise anatomy of the promise let us work on that what is the anatomy of the promise so here you will get to know anatomy of the promise now whenever you create the promise right so how do you create the promise you can create the promise in const prm is equals to is equals to new promise can you see now what do you mean by this new promise can you tell me if you if you don't know this thing this is all greek to you so this can be explained in two ways please explain this line new is a uh, create a empty object okay there is a promise is constructor okay hello yeah go ahead yes uh, constructor it is also class 
okay constructor and class class please define it you are you are correct but still define it properly so when you when you look at that promise what do you understand internally the constructor is uh, so you need to say create object just a minute you can say it like that promise is either constructor function or it is a class and that's why object of the constructor function can be created in this way or object of the class can be created in this way okay now this constructor accepts a function what is this what is this symbol i am writing over here arrow function arrow function correct so the constructor of the promise requires one parameter yes and that parameter is one function function this whole is one parameter and that is one function this function and that function has two parameters resolve and reject j e c t r e j e c t resolve and what reject okay. and here you will write a synchronous operation so this code you will write for making the connectivity to the cctv inside the promise yes. getting my point so you will not write this code directly over here that is bad yes so you will write code which is asynchronous in nature so what type of codes are asynchronous in nature connecting to the database reading or writing to the file right connecting to third party devices like cctv connecting to the printer connecting to any iot device reading a heavy excel sheet now you are writing javascript program where you need to read we you need to read the excel all these are some common task where you need promise right what things you can write in the promise below things can be written in promise as a sync operation for example for example connecting to db just a minute yes. reading or writing to file or connecting to printer so let's write first just a minute okay so promises so here in the basics 10 things okay so here we didn't synchronous code 
asynchronous code definition of the promises anatomy of the promises and here we can say h1 task asynchro examples of async async means you consider asynchronous async tasks that can be written in promises first fetching the data from api is one task so connect to the external api and get the data asynchronously a reading from a file read the data from a file either on a server or locally writing to a file reading or writing read or write data connecting to database so all these are the examples of async tasks there are many so i am just giving you example so that you can identify your operation is synchronous or asynchronous if operation is asynchronous you will write it into what promise correct connecting to db sending an email this is one another example sending an email then image processing perform the image processing related tasks asynchronously user authentication checking a username and password like sign in with google sign in with facebook right network requests network requests network request means it contains all types of iot communication printer communication like this real time communication means chat or something like this implement the real time communication using the technology like web sockets uploading files to the server this is also a synchronous task that you need to write it into the promise correct so these are some examples these are some examples you need to remember this and i will write etc i can write what etc you need to identify the nature of the operation is a synchronous or asynchronous and accordingly you need to write it into the promise otherwise normal operations cannot be written in. so for loop it is not required to write a for loop in a promise but what kind of things you need to write into the promise you can take a reference of these tasks states of the promises okay so what you will write something like this is there if something like this is there right all these things can be written in a promise so i will copy all these things so you can do like this anything which lies in this domain you can write it into the promise correct yes now there are two types of the results of the promise either resolve here you can pass any any object whatever uh, op say abc status 101 completed means so resolve means what success do not forget what is the resolve we have written yes okay we have not written or written promises okay we are about to write that in a full in a full paid operation is typically passed through the resolve function correct success 
in the full field if operation is success then we use a resolve function and if operation is failure we use which function reject reject sorry reject and here your any any kind of error object your error object yesterday we have seen the error so that yes. error object can be passed to the failed promise okay so let's write about resolve and reject so the anatomy of the promises involves the components of the promises this component the anatomy of the promises involves understanding the three key components promise constructor resolve function reject function the components work together to create the managed promises in the javascript so first we can say promise constructor so here we can say promise constructor the promise constructor is used to create new promise object it takes a single argument function it takes a single argument a function often referred as the executor function which is executed immediately when promise is created the executor function takes two arguments resolve and reject they are talking about this so this function is called as executor function then let's write the code code so this is the promise constructor then h2 h2 resolve function the resolve function is a part of the promise executor functions can you see you get resolve from here yes. then it is called the asynchronous operation it is called when the asynchronous operation associated with the promise now what is the asynchronous operation out of this list anything if successful is there then resolve is called the resolve function here you can say the resolve resolve function transitions the promise from the pending state to what fulfilled state remember that it takes the optional value it takes the optional value which is nothing but this this is the optional parameter it takes the optional value as an argument representing the result of the operation so here code and this here you can say reject function now this is what you don't know right now once resolve function is called then then where this values goes we'll see this you are passing this value to someone the operation is successful above any of the operation whatever you are doing that operation is successful and you are passing this value but you are passing this value to whom you are passing this value to whom you will get to know shortly okay this is about this line once the resolve function is called any attached then handlers consume the code will executed with the resolve value let's go to the reject function the reject function is also part of the promise executor function which is nothing but this this is the this whole function is called as executor function which is having resolve and reject it is called it is called when the asynchronous operation encounters an error or fail the reject function 
द रिजेक्ट फंक्शन ट्रांजिशन द प्रॉमिस फ्रॉम द पेंडिंग स्टेट टू द रिजेक्टेड स्टेट नाउ युअर प्रॉमिस आईदर कैन हैव रिजॉल्व और इट कैन हैव रिजेक्ट वाय बिकॉज रिजॉल्व इज गोइंग टू मूव प्रॉमिस फ्रॉम पेंडिंग स्टेट टू द फुलफिल्ड स्टेट एंड रिजेक्ट इज गोइंग टू मूव प्रॉमिस फ्रॉम pending state to the rejected state it takes an error as a reason you can give why rejected correct that's the argument you can copy code here promise reject new error object right once reject is called once reject is called once reject is called it will happen something like this so this is what the anatomy of promises now how exactly you will work with the promise we will see now now h1 here we can say h1 consuming the promises now consider that we have created a promise let's go to the app 04.js so let me create a promise const prm new promise new promise executor function resolve reject and here i can say set time out and set time out and after 300 milliseconds i resolve status okay okay after 200 milliseconds so okay. set time out also expecting a function it is nothing but that function and this will called after 200 milliseconds but what to do with this promise right you don't need to assign it now see resolve to whom then block then then represent success catch represents error if there is any error that error would be captured in the catch block and if you see here if you see here resolve it is giving this object so here we can say obz and console dot log ob right so any of the async operation you are writing over here this is nothing but you are consuming the promise this is what you are consuming either you are consuming success or you are consuming an error over here so if there is a reject this would be getting called if there is a resolve this would be getting called right
इज इट क्लियर नाउ इफ यू रन दिस कोड यू कैन से नोड एप जीरो फोर डॉट जे एस सी स्टेटस ओके फ्रॉम वेर इट इज गेटिंग प्रिंटेड इट इज गेटिंग प्रिंटेड ओवर हियर ओके नाउ कंज्यूमिंग द प्रोमिसेस इनवॉल्व कंज्यूमिंग प्रोमिसेस इनवॉल्व हैंडलिंग द रिजल्ट और एरर फॉर असिंक्रोनस ऑपरेशन वंस द प्रोमिसेस आर फुलफिल्ड और रिजेक्टेड द प्रोमिसेस इन जावा स्क्रिप्ट प्रोवाइड अ क्लीन एंड स्ट्रक्चर्ड वे जस्ट वी हैव सीन प्रोमिसेस इन जावा स्क्रिप्ट प्रोवाइड अ क्लीन एंड स्ट्रक्चर्ड वे टू हैंडल द असिंक्रोनस कोड एंड कंज्यूमिंग द प्रोमिसेस typically involve dot then and dot catch methods right we have seen that so using dot then for fulfilled promises is yes. and using what dot catch for rejected promises for rejected promises so the then method then method is used to handle the successful fulfillment of a promise it takes it takes a callback function as its argument which will be executed when the promises are resolved or fulfilled the callback function receives the callback function receives the resolved value as its argument right so code we have seen my promise dot then then a result and here you can handle what error yes. correct yes. so using catch block the catch method is used to handle the rejection of the promises same it takes the callback so they are talking about this callback right and in the earlier case of then this callback then the callback function re receives the rejection argument that is the error object over here or let's write this code for consuming and here and here new promise this code for reject so instead of resolve i can call and here catch object error error and here we can say new error like this correct yes. now chaining of the promises that is also part of the consuming h2 chaining multiple then methods and that's the need of uh, async await now here chaining there can be multiple then blocks multiple then block then methods can be chained together to handle the sequence of the asynchronous operation each then each then receives the result of the previous operation so sequence of the multiple async operations 
zero five dot js. Here we can say const prm is equals to new promise. New promise. And here resolve R E J E C T reject like this. From here we are going to resolve a new promise. Can you see? Resolve new promise from here. Another async operation we are resolving. And here resolve reject like this. Then you can say dot then here PRM just a minute. Not from here. From here, we can simply resolve STS. Okay. So, from here, you are resolving new promise, right? Resolve, reject. And then here you can call the then block. Can you see? multiple thens dot then what happened Some typing mistake is there. Now, this is the complete code. But you got the idea, right? One bracket was missing over there. Resolve and reject. A chaining of the chaining. So, here you do one async operation. Inside that async operation, again you do one more async operation. Here also you do async operation. Right? That thing is called as chaining of the promises. That thing is called as what? Chaining of the promises. So, this is all about, this is all about what you can say, promises. So, exact use case we will see shortly. Exact use where you will use promise we will see shortly but this is the fundamental theory behind the promises javascript promises deep understanding i have pushed the code
fine then we'll call it for a day we'll meet tomorrow yes sir thank you yes sir thank you